Welcome to our benchmarks and comparison of the new Exynos 2100 that is found in the Galaxy S21 series of smartphones. So the whole Exynos 2100 right now is that it's made out of 5 nanometer lithography process and Samsung claims that Exynos is back and they have been teasing that on Twitter, on Facebook, on even in their CES week of announcement, there's just one video that is slot in there where they say Exynos is back. Exynos is back. And also explain some of the technical details of the Exynos 2100, but they didn't really go in depth. So in this video, we're going to compare the Exynos 2100 against some of its older chips because we still do not have a smartphone that's running Snapdragon 888 as of now. So this is the Mi 10T Pro running the Snapdragon 865. And then this is the Galaxy Note 20 that is running the Exynos 990. And here we have the Galaxy S21 Ultra, the latest ultra flagship smartphone from Samsung that is running the latest Exynos 2100. So let's put all these three in comparison and see how much did Exynos improve and if it's actually better than the previous generation of the Snapdragon chipset. Now before we begin, we also have to first tell you that these two phones right here is running previous generation of chipsets. That means they have a full year for driver optimization, software optimization, and also app developers optimizations as well. Whereas the Exynos 2100 here has been in the market for like less than a week or so. So those drivers are still not optimized as of now, but well, we'll have to make do with what we have as of this point in time. Now as for specs, the Mi 10T Pro that we have here comes with 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage whereas the Galaxy Note 20 comes with 8GB of RAM with 256GB of storage and then as for the Galaxy S21 Ultra comes with 12GB of RAM with 256GB of storage as well. So we will dive into a few benchmarks and we'll start off with this 3D Mark Wildlife benchmark. And this benchmark here is running at 1440p and then scaled down to whatever resolution that your phone is using. And this benchmark is emulating a short burst of intense action while you're playing a game. So for example, if you're playing, let's just say Mobile Legends, and then uh, there's a team fight. So that's all the intense action happening on screen. And this wildlife benchmark is emulating that in the one minute benchmark test. And obviously looking at the results right here, the Exynos 2100 in the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra just wins both of these two phones by far. So the second test that we do is still in 3D Mark, but then this time we are doing the wildlife stress test, which means they are running the usual wildlife benchmark, but in 20 loops consecutively. And in the results, we can see that the Mi 10T Pro can sustain its score across all 20 loops it actually quite consistently, whereas the Galaxy Note 20 did dip a bit at the 10th loop mark, but it didn't really drop that much. As for the Galaxy S21 Ultra though, it's dropped a lot actually. So once it reached the 10th loop, then the scores dropped from about 5,000 score to about 3,600 something like that. And that's quite a significant drop, but then we can see that it maintained all the way through at 3,600-ish mark. By looking at the results of this graph in the 3D Mark Wildlife Stress Test Benchmark, we can see that it actually suggests that the Galaxy S21 Ultra is thermal throttling, but we can't confirm that for sure because by looking at Antutu Benchmark, it's kind of weird, but we'll talk about that later. So we'll move on now to Geekbench Benchmark. And on these three phones, obviously the Galaxy S21 Ultra CPU benchmark is going to be a lot better in terms of single core and multi core on both of these phones. Actually, it improved against the Exynos 990 the most. In single core performance, it got 1.5 times better. And then for multi core performance, it got 1.33 times better than the Exynos 990. And that's a huge leap for the Exynos 2100 against its predecessor, the Exynos 990. And now we move on to Geekbench Compute Benchmark using OpenCL and then we can see that, wow, the Exynos 2100 is just superb. It's double the score of the Snapdragon 865 and 1.3 times better than the Exynos 990. That's, that's a huge leap. And then comes Antutu. It is a benchmark that I personally do not like because it aggregates all of the 
multiple different aspects of a smartphone into a single score and if you have more RAM then the score will obviously get better but that's not the point of this video I'm not gonna talk about that so if we only isolate both the CPU and GPU scores in Antutu benchmark we can see that the Exynos 2100 here trades blows in CPU benchmark with the Snapdragon 865 but when it comes to GPU, the Mali G78 MP14 GPU that's inside the Exynos 2100 is much better than the Adreno 650 that's inside the Snapdragon 865. And by looking back at the temperature graph in Antutu Benchmark, we can see that the Galaxy S21 Ultra, it seems to have a phobia against the 40 degrees Celsius mark because it never tends to heat it. And after the 39.4 degrees Celsius, if I remember correctly, the graph just starts to drop in terms of temperature. Perhaps it is thermal throttling, but I don't feel any heat on the phone at all. It's just slightly warm. Perhaps it's a countermeasure to prevent the phone from getting hot in the first place. And that is why it thermal throttles at a much earlier level. And as a quick bonus, I'm also going to do Andro Bench right here because the UFS 3.1 storage on the Galaxy S21 Ultra has been upgraded. And as we can see in this result right here, the scores actually suggest that as well. The Galaxy S21 Ultra is just a lot faster than both the Note 20 and also the Mi 20 Pro, which both of them are also using UFS 3.1 storage chips. And that's it. That's the comparison between the Exynos 2100 against the Snapdragon 865 and also the Exynos 990. And when you finally get this phone for yourself, I'm pretty sure that the benchmark scores will be different from what I have shown in this video because number one, more software update is going to roll out and further optimize the chipset for its performance and secondly, I think more drivers are going to be optimized as well it's going to get matured for the Exynos 2100 yeah, that's it and if you want to know more about the gaming performance of the Exynos 2100 because benchmarks don't really translate into real life performance do check out our video at the top right corner there and also check out our review of the Galaxy S21 Ultra and we'll see you in the next video. Yeah, all of the videos are here by the way.